Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly, and this is the Talking Points Memo. Back in the early 1980s, I worked for CBS News as a correspondent, and the most powerful presence there was Dan Rather, the anchor of the CBS Evening News. Now, we all knew that Dan Rather was a liberal man. Um, He didn't go around waving an ideological flag, and indeed, he denied being uh, a left-wing thinker. But there was a culture uh, within the building on 57th Street in Manhattan um, that basically told anybody who was aware that Dan had liberal leanings. Nothing wrong with that um, unless he was imposing uh, his uh, belief system on the correspondence, which would have been bad. Now, I had one story killed uh, because of ideology. It was about uh, gays in Provincetown, Massachusetts, coming to that small fishing village and uh, partying, partying in a way that offended the people who lived there. I got both sides. I did some undercover work. Great story. Wouldn't run it. They wouldn't run it. It was politically incorrect to run something that disparaged gays. Not that the story was anti-gay. It wasn't. But some of the conduct by the young men uh, wasn't the best. So anyway, uh, that sent a message to me going, oh, hoo-hoo. Um, Dan Rather didn't really have anything to do with that, I don't think. It was producers who did it. But anyway, um, I knew that at CBS, liberal ideology was the prevailing ideology, okay? So now we fast forward, what? Oh, One, two, three, more than 30 years. And Dan Rather is 87 years old on Halloween. And after uh, the Kavanaugh confirmation, Dan Rather put this on Facebook. I want to read this. So Collins, Senator Collins from Maine, misses her moment to be a hero. And the old bulls win again. Trump, McConnell, Grassley, Hatch, Graham, the whole lot of them win. And they're laughing, congratulating one another, at least metaphorically, or popping champagne. And recognize that you are not alone. Far from it. Look to your left and your right, before you and behind you, at the millions who will support you on this journey for justice. Fill your lungs with the determined air of action. So Dan Rather is calling for the people to rise up and beat the old bulls. McConnell, Grassley, Hatch, Graham, Trump. Okay. Now, does this surprise you? No. It can't. It doesn't surprise me. I mean, I I appreciate Dan's energy at age 87. But this is now transferred into the media in America. So it used to be that Dan Rather would deny he was liberal. Oh, you know, I'm not liberal. Even though I gave Nixon a hard time and I, I got to the CBS News anchor chair... Uh, by doing things that were kind of against the Republican establishment. I'm not. I'm not really liberal. Walter Cronkite said the same thing, and and when Walter retired, he came out as a real ardent left-wing guy, you'll remember. But now there's no disguise. There's no disguise. They can say they're not liberal, CBS, NBC, ABC, CNN, MSNBC, PBS. (laughs) They can say it, but everybody knows they are, and everybody knows that people who are hired at those news organizations are expected to tow the liberal line, and they do, because they want a career. Now, I didn't. I was always an independent thinker, always did stories honestly, and I didn't stay at CBS News very long, all right, because I had the culture where I wasn't comfortable there, and I'm sure they weren't comfortable with me, because I wasn't like, yes, sir, I'll go out and skew this story. I'm going to do that. But today, we have such media corruption. There's no balance at all. It's Fox News standing against all the others, and Fox News, quite frankly, is not what it used to be. All right? Um, So you, the American citizen, are missing a lot of stories, unless you subscribe to BillOReilly.com or Newsmax, which you're watching now, and, you know, so you'll get more stories than if you were watching the left-wing newscast. But the bottom line is the Founding Fathers wanted an independent press to watch all the powerful. We don't have it. It's gone. It's never coming back. 
And that's going to mean something to the United States upcoming. And that's the memo. I'm Bill O'Reilly for Newsmax, reminding you to go to BillOReilly.com for independent analysis. And today, the release of my new book, Killing the SS. First day out. Sales are really good. Um, it's the eighth in the Killing series. I think you will enjoy it, and I hope you check it out. We'll see you soon.